Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather. I'm David Percy and first graphic, fire danger, extreme fire danger up over the Yukon Flats there, Porcupine River and the upper Yukon. And uh, we've got uh, some very high fire danger southward there to the mountains north of Fairbanks and southwestward into the central and west central interior areas. High fire danger over the Yukon Cusquam Delta down into Togiak Bay and uh, also South Central Alaska, Susitna Valley, very high fire danger and uh, areas of the Kenai Peninsula up toward uh, Old Cooper Landing, Broadview and those areas east of uh, Soldotna and Sterling. Uh, Soldotna, Sterling, Kenai in the high fire danger zone. And then a small area there in the Copper River Basin, Central Copper River Basin of high to very high fire danger, but nothing all that significant. Otherwise, from there, uh, satellite imagery showing low pressure continuing to slowly move northward across the Bering Strait area and up into the Chukchi Sea. And a band of uh, precipitation kind of just uh, dissipating in place over the west central part of the state. That brought some uh, soaking rains to some areas over the last 24 hours. For example, no attack picking up about a third of an inch of rain. Galena and Kotzebue both had 15 hundredths of an inch. And then lighter amounts down in toward Bristol Bay. Uh, light showers continuing into the afternoon with cloudy skies there, but sunshine uh, from about uh, Togiak Cape Newenham and partly sunny skies over the inland areas of the Yukon Cusquam Delta and the central and northern interior, especially the northeast interior, seeing uh, pretty sunny skies today with uh, temperatures rising into the lower 70s. And the southeast coast, a little drier, uh, some clouds and showers uh, trending to end down in that area. And out to the west, we've got a system beginning to affect the Aleutians there. You see the massive clouds swinging up. The main low center is still off the chart of the satellite imagery. And then you can see the other uh, low center pulling back into the Russian far east uh, with a couple of bands really thinning out. You can see the one from the western Arctic coast there just east of Kotzebue down across the uh, lower Yukon River Valley into northeast Bristol Bay where it's kind of linking up with a little moisture from that system uh, southeast of Kodiak and that frontal system brought about eight tenths of an inch of rain into Kodiak. Some of that uh, drifting eastward there linking up with the uh, moisture from the dying front and that uh, giving the showers into the afternoon, scattered showers and cloudy skies for northeast Bristol Bay into the southern Cuscoom Valley. Otherwise, uh, showers scattered around the mountainous terrain with isolated thunderstorms developing central and eastern part of the state today, except for the northeast, mostly sunny skies there. And showers scattered over the northern panhandle, but it became partly sunny over the southern areas. And you can see the pressure field of that next system starting to move into the western Aleutians. Winds on the increase this afternoon, along with rain. Uh, still dry at Adak and Atka, and uh, not bad over the Fox Islands, Alaska Peninsula, mostly dry conditions with light winds. Tonight, gale, gale force winds move into the Aleutians and advance eastward to Atka Island with rain uh, heavy at times from Atka westward to Shimianat too. Otherwise, high pressure ridging from Bristol Bay in the Alaska Peninsula northward there keeps it dry from the western Arctic coast and across much of the western interior. Uh, down into the Alaska Peninsula. Look for uh, remnants of that frontal boundary to keep uh, rain becoming a little more showery for Kodiak Island and a uh, few isolated to scattered showers or thunderstorms over the eastern central terrain, mostly along the Alaska Peninsula, or the Alaska Range. Uh, nothing though, south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, mostly dry. Uh, with some clearing and that same pattern for the North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle. Dry conditions with a uh, fair amount of clearing. Eastern Arctic Coast could see some clearing skies, light winds up there, uh, but a chance of a thunderstorm this evening over the Eastern Brooks Range. That continues again tomorrow, some moisture up that way, just unstable enough to uh, trigger some afternoon thunderstorm development over the Central Eastern Brooks Range as well as the uh, Eastern Alaska Range as well. 
Tanana Valley, northward there into the upper Yukon will be mostly sunny and uh, mild temperatures into the 70s. Also the west and northwest interior looking pretty good. Yukon Delta mostly sunny, going mostly cloudy for the Cusquam Delta, and then cloudy with scattered showers for Bristol Bay area, southern Cusquam Valley into the western Alaska range, but partly mostly sunny. Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet, north Gulf Coast, mostly sunny for the Panhandle. Uh, gale force winds with gusts of 50 miles an hour for the eastern Aleutians, but as that front lifts north of Adak and Atka, winds will diminish in the afternoon. Stronger winds later tonight into early tomorrow morning. With a fair amount of rain across all the Aleutian chain, they'll be pushing into the far western Alaska Peninsula. Falls Pass area may be making its way into uh, King Cove, uh, probably staying dry from Nelson Lagoon and uh, Cold Bay with uh, sunshine for Sand Point uh, for the day tomorrow. And then moving ahead to Thursday, that front weakens, loses the gale force winds, but small craft divisors for the Alaska Peninsula as that uh, front moves in with gusts 35 to 40 miles an hour, 30 to 40 miles an hour, maybe even a little higher there for Cold Bay. But uh, periods of light rain, fog and drizzle along in advance of that front up to the Pribilof Island, spreading up to about St. Matthew Island, maybe reaching Nunavak Island late in the afternoon. Otherwise, a weak trough brings some scattered showers to the Yukon Cuscombe Delta and the Auckland uh, Kilbrook Mountain areas, and mostly north of uh, Dillingham and Togiak. Again, the western Alaska Range, central Alaska Range, maybe the Talkeetna is risk of some afternoon thunderstorm activity, as well as the uh, areas uh, just south of the Yukon River there in the flats, and also the Brooks Range, another uh, scattered thunderstorm condition up there in the afternoon, but dry for the Arctic coast, mostly sunny. Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, North Gulf Coast, and uh, Northern Panhandle, mostly cloudy to the south, but w uh, winds will stay light and conditions dry. Lows tonight, 30 to 35, Arctic Coast North Slope, uh, in the 40s from the Brooks Range, lower to mid, and 45 to 55 over the eastern interior, except the Copper River Basin, lower to mid 40s, and 45 to 50, South Central Alaska, 40 to 45 for the lows, Yukon Cuscombe Delta into the Cuscombe Valley, 40s for Bristol Bay, Mid to upper 30s for the Seward Peninsula and uh, Kotzebue Sound area, lower 40s for the Aleutians, 40s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, 75 to 80 for the Fairbanks area up into the uh, Yukon Flats. And then cooling as you head west into the 60s and the 50s and then the mid 40s around Nome, Kotzebue, high 42, 38 for Tin City, but freezing though. 40s for the Arctic coast, 50s to lower to mid 60s for the North Slope areas, near 70 for Arctic Village, 60s and near 70 for the uh, Panhandle, near 60 Kodiak Island, 65 to 72 for the Susitna Valley, and 65 to 70 for the areas of the Kenai Peninsula away from the coastline, otherwise 45 to 50 out over the Aleutians in the Bering Sea, and in the 50s for the Alaska Peninsula. And for Thursday morning, lows over much of the interior south of the Brooks Range, 40s to lower 50s. Same thing for the Panhandle. Upper 30s for the Pervilofs, 30s to near 40 for the Arctic Coast and North Slope, followed by highs. Again, 75 to 80 for the central and eastern interior north of the Alaska Range, mid-70s Copper River Basin, low warmer in the Susitna Valley and Kenai Peninsula, 70 to 75, 60s along the coast and quite war uh, warming over the northern panhandle 75 to 80 for the highs but staying in the mid to upper 60s down south otherwise upper 40s for the Aleutians lower to mid 40s for the Arctic coast. And now aviation weather around Alaska. Wednesday morning nothing but VFR in the interior from the Arctic coast right on down to the North Gulf Coast Marginal VFR right along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula into the Barren Islands, covering Kodiak Island, and along the southeast coast, VFR for the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay. Lower stuff along the west coast, there are solid IFR from the northern Bering Sea down to the Pribilofs, Nunavak Island, southwest, Adak, westward to Shimiana too. Marginal VFR eastward to Winnemac Island. And then for the afternoon, IFR now up to uh, Unimac Island, covering all the Aleutians, marginal VFR for Unalaska Island, and the Pribilofs and Nunavak Island becoming marginal in the afternoon. Otherwise, we've got VFR, interior Alaska, again from the Arctic coast down to Kodiak Island, becoming VFR there. And uh, KP St. Elias there, KP Akataga, kind of in the marginal zone, but the Panhandle, marginal VFR pulling well off the coast. 
and uh, some marginal VFR along the western Arctic coast into Kivalina and the western Seward Peninsula. For the morning Thursday, some areas of marginal VFR along the Arctic coast and northwest coast, otherwise VFR, interior Alaska, and the Panhandle mar VFR as well, Kodiak Island VFR, lower stuff in the Gulf of Alaska, marginal VFR, Alaska Peninsula to ADAC, IFRM, Chitka Island to Shimia, that too, and the Perbloff's IFR the entire day Thursday as that area advances eastward to Nikolsky and extends north through the Bering Strait, just clipping, looks like Point Hope, but the interior in the Panhandle, Kodiak Island, Prince William Sound, all VFR, including uh, Bristol Bay area. Marginal VFR for the Alaska Peninsula and the Eastern Aleutians. And for Anatovic and Adigan, both VFR flying, either approach tomorrow, good VFR flying for Adigan as well. And Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR for the next couple of days. And uh, Rainy, VFR for at least through tomorrow, likely through uh, Thursday as well. Windy, VFR. Isabel, VFR. Mintasta, VFR. Tanita, VFR. And Portage, VFR from start to finish on either entrance. And Chilkoot and White, good VFR. Freezing levels at the surface now back up to the north there along the north slope, two to 4,000 feet over the northern Bering Sea and four to 6,000 feet there, southern Bering Sea and along the Aleutians, 8,000 feet up over the northeast interior, six to 7,000 feet southeast and southern Alaska in the Panhandle. And for the uh, icing, looks like a pretty good swath of uh, considerable moderate rime icing, eight to 16,000 feet pushing in in advance of the front with the moisture coming in, pushing in across the uh, Fox Islands to False Pass in the afternoon, extending back to Atka and Adak. Otherwise, that, that weaker system up to the uh, north, giving the uh, elevated threat of some light icing there, St. Lawrence Island, through the Bering Strait and the western Seward Peninsula, maybe as far north as Point Hope, Cape Lisburn, but just a slight chance. And for the jet stream, we've got uh, southwest flow developing south of the Aleutians there with uh, one low just southwest of the Pribilofs, another one south of Amchitka Island. And then it takes a turn to the east across the Alaska Peninsula and then dives southeastward there just south of Kodiak Island, uh, well south of the Panhandle. So light flow at uh, 33,000 feet here at, for the eastern and all of the interior of the Panhandle and Gulf of Alaska. And then at 9,000 feet, southwest 40 knots across the Chuck CC aimed up to Kivalina and uh, say Cape Lisburn Point Lay area. And 45 to 55 knot winds with that active front pushing in across eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. 40 knots out of the southeast over the southern Bering Sea, turning back around to uh, 35 out of the east northeast over the western Aleutians. And pretty strong winds, 3,000 feet tomorrow, 60 knots out of the south for the Fox Islands, turning southeast at 50 to 55 knots, more of an easterly direction as you head west there, turning eventually northeast at about 50 knots, but that's south of Shimia. Otherwise, light variable winds, interior Alaska, the Gulf and the Panhandle, southwest uh, 40 knots into the Bering Strait, just clipping the western Arctic coastal areas in the northwest capes. Turbulence with those uh, winds, St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula, Kotzebue Sound, Notak Valley, northwest coast, light a uh, considerable water chop. Same thing for the uh, uh, Alaska Peninsula. And the Aleutians, seven, or surface 7,000 feet, considerable moderate chop, especially for small aircraft. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And today I'm privileged to introduce Dr. Uccellini, the director of the United States National Weather Service. Welcome back to Alaska, sir. Thank you, Dave. Glad to be here. Thanks. Uh, prior to be being the leader of the National Weather Service, uh, your work included an extensive look at snowstorms across the northeastern United States. These are the types of storms that can bring some of the country's largest cities to its knees. Uh, tell me a little bit about your fascination with snow. Well, as far back as I can remember, I've always been interested in, in weather, mm -hmm. uh, growing up as a, as a kid in, uh, on Long Island, New York, and was particularly fascinated by uh, snowstorms. Um, why they occurred, the distribution of snow was very varied across the entire region, the rain snow line, all those things fascinated me right from the get-go and um, I was interested in knowing how they worked, um, how the forecast worked or 
more often than not didn't work uh, uh, one way or the other. And that drove me, um, um, that interest continued to build and um, drove me through high school right into college uh, wanting to be a meteorologist. Oh, okay, that's a fascinating story and I think every meteorologist has a weather story like that in some way. Right. Uh, due to Alaska's size and the proximity to the North Pole, sometimes it's difficult to detect and analyze the weather patterns over Alaska. Uh, what's the National Weather Service doing to improve that weather detection? Well, uh, observations uh, in this type of an environment is, is a big challenge, uh, whether it's um, from space um, or uh, from what we call in-situ observations from the, from the ground or within the systems. Mm -hmm. Um, clearly, uh, satellites have been playing an increasing role in providing uh, the big picture, uh, not only from a visual sense and what you see is occurring, um, but also from providing the data for numerical models that then are used to actually predict the weather. Uh, Alaska is actually pretty well uh, positioned with respect to polar orbiting satellites since you get a, um, a, a faster return of those satellites over your particular area. And in fact, the, uh, the polar satellite system is the backbone for the observations that we use in our models, uh, especially our global models, and they're particularly important uh, for observing weather features that affect Alaska. Alaskans live and die by the weather every day. And one of the strategic goals of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the National Weather Service is to develop a more weather-ready nation. What does it mean for Alaskans to be weather-ready? Well, the, the strategic outcome is based on uh, people being ready, responsive, and therefore resilient to uh, the increasing uh, threats to extreme weather events. Uh, those threats are related to um, not only the nature of the events, but the fact that we're becoming more vulnerable to them as we have more people, more infrastructure uh, that could be um, affected by these events. So we have to ensure that the observations we make for situational awareness, the forecasts we make for people to take the proper responses um, are connected uh, to people's uh, actions, uh, the response to these events, so that uh, they will be more resilient uh, to um, uh, what's uh, facing them. Um, you know, there are examples with respect to hurricanes, uh, more people living along the coastline takes longer to evacuate. We have to make better forecasts with longer lead times, but we also have to communicate the threat so people will actually take action to avoid those storms. Up here you have, um, as in other parts of the United States, an increasing threat related to fire. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as there are more people living in fire-prone areas, um, we have to ensure that our forecasts are good, uh, that we don't have uh, false alarms that make people not react to uh, uh, the forecast when, in fact, they should. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have to be able to communicate the threat and make sure that we're working with the partners in the emergency management community uh, so that um, communities uh, and right down to individuals will actually take the proper responses in the face of these events. So that's the strategic goal. There are a lot of challenges for us terms of improving forecasts, but also improving our communication skills and linking with the emergency management communities that are actually out there uh, trying to protect lives and mitigate property loss. So a huge partnership effort going forward. Uh, that's, that's one of the important keys for the success of uh, meeting the strategic goal. Okay. Well, one of the things you're talking about was uh, understanding the, the weather information we're getting back from the computers, weather modeling, and you did a lot of work with that in some of your prior, uh, prior positions with the Environmental Prediction Center there, the National Center for Environmental Prediction. Um, what can you tell us about recent improvements in that weather modeling? And you're using uh, the polar orbiters as kind of a, a source of information that started right. that process. Well, you know, first of all, we have to recognize that everything you see you read and hear about weather, climate, or ocean forecasts are all driven by numerical models. Now, mm -hmm. it, it really has been the, uh, the revolution in our forecast process uh, in the last part of, um, of the 20th century. Uh, the success of that numerical enterprise is based on three factors. Big computers, mm -hmm. um, po uh, global data, not just local data, but you have to have a global data set and then the models themselves, the science that's behind the models and in running the models um, in an operational mode. So we're working to improve all three of those components. Uh, we um, 
upgraded our computers last year. We're, we're going through another upgrade right, even as I speak. Uh, we'll be upgrading from 200 trillion calculations per second to 700 trillion mm -hmm. calculations per second by January of 2015. Uh, this increase in the computer will allow us to run what we call Earth system models. It's not just the atmosphere, it's the atmosphere, ocean, mm -hmm. ice, which is obviously very important up here, and land models that are all coupled together okay. at higher resolution. So you need the big computers, you need the uh, science uh, that allows us to run these models and run them in a parallel mode and that they're coupled so that the ocean effects could affect the atmosphere and vice versa, mm -hmm. as an example. Uh, and then the global observations are absolutely critical and um, over the last 20, 30 years they've become more dependent upon the satellite systems um, and especially the uh, polar orbiting satellites which help drive the, uh, the observations needed for those models whether they be atmospheric observations, land, ice observations. Um, we're driving more and more of that from satellites now that feed into these models and produce forecasts with extended lead times now, uh, you know, for extreme events especially, we're, we're seeing a much improved forecast out in the four, five, six, seven, and even eight day range, which is, gets us back to Weather Ready Nation because if you're going to get ready for a storm event, you want those consistent forecasts approaching that event from day seven, six, five, four, three, mm -hmm. so you can take the actions several days in advance that can help mitigate the property loss and, and, and protect uh, your livelihood. Okay, all part of the mission of protecting life and property. Dr. Uccellini, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And speaking to Alaskans and sharing how the National Weather Service is working for Alaska and the nation. Wish you safe travels around the 49th. Enjoy your time here, sir. And for Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecasts on the south coast, north to northeast winds, 15 to 20 knots for the day Wednesday, seas around six feet. And on the north coast, uh, north to northwest, 15 to 20 knots. Northern central inside waters, variable winds, 10 knots with two foot seas, clearance straight northwest winds at 15 knots with three foot seas. And for the day Thursday, We've got uh, south winds at 15 knots for Lincoln Island Glacier Bay, Stevens Passage looking at a northwest breeze at 15 knots, Clarence Strait, southeast winds 15 knots, three foot seas. Small craft advisories on the south coast for 25 knot winds out of the northwest, seas around 10 feet, and west-northwest uh, small craft advisory winds 25 to 30 knots for the north coast, seas running 8 to 10 feet. Prince William Sound, eastern north Gulf Coast, variable winds at 10 knots. Cook Inlet, south to southwest breeze, 10 to 15 knots, seas at 3 feet. Western north Gulf Coast and the Barren Islands, northeast winds, 15 knots. And for Kamishak Bay, light variable winds at 10 knots with 3 foot seas. And for Thursday, for Cook Inlet, south to southwest winds, 15 knots. Kamishak Bay, southeast at 15. Small craft advisories for the Barren Islands, southeast winds 25 knots. Small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast for west-southwest winds at 25 knots. But seas only around 4 feet. Prince William Sound, winds will be out of the south at 15 knots. For Kodiak Island, variable to northwest winds, 10 to 15 knots with 4 to 5 foot seas. Then the Alaska Peninsula, southeast winds increasing 20 to 25 knots in the afternoon. With seas only around 3 feet and Bristol Bay, light variable winds at 10 knots. Bristol Bay on Thursday, small craft advisories, southeast winds 25 knots with five foot seas and the Alaska Peninsula, small craft advisories, south to southeast winds at 30 knots with seven to 14 foot seas. Kodiak Island, south winds 20 to 25 knots. <clears throat> Fox Islands on Wednesday, east to southeast winds at 40 knots, seas running eight to 16 feet. And gale warnings also for the uh, central Aleutians, east winds 40 to 45 knots, and that extends all the way to Amchitka Island from Kiska to Shimia. Winds will be northeast at 35 knots. And we lose the gales on Thursday. Small craft advisories though from Shimia to Amchitka Island for north winds at 30 knots. North to northwest winds 20 to 25 knots for Adak and Atka. And for the Fox Islands, south to southeast winds 25 to 30 knots with seas running 9 to 20 feet. 
And for the southwest coast, east to southeast winds, 10 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet. Small craft advisories for the Pribilof Islands, east winds increased in 25 knots with 5 foot seas. Small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island as well, south winds 25 knots with 5 foot seas. And for Thursday, Pribilof Islands, east winds 30 knots, seas 12 feet. Small craft advisories for the Cusquam Delta Coast, south of Nunavak Island, east winds at 25 knots. Yukon Delta Coast and St. Matthew Island, winds will be northeast at 20. And St. Lawrence Island, east winds 15 knots with seas at 4 feet. For the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast tomorrow, east winds 20 knots, 15 knots out of the east for the central coast, and then southeast at 20 knots for the west side. And from Cape Beaufort to Wales, south to southeast winds, 25 knots with 5 foot seas. And small craft advisories continue on Thursday from Wales to Cape Beaufort, south winds 25 knots, seas 6 feet. And brisk wind advisories for the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, uh, Kaktovik to Demarcation Point, east winds 25 knots, and from uh, for the eastern coastline, about 20 knots out of the east and then south to southeast 15 to 20 knots for the central and western coast for tonight uh, scattered isolated showers and thunderstorms all in a downward trend mode over the eastern and central interior especially along the alaska range and up toward the brooks range in the mountains uh, north and northeast of fairbanks china ridge for example Big storm coming into the western Aleutians, uh, actually into the central Aleutians as well, with uh, gale force winds and rain heavy at times. Scattered showers for the uh, Kodiak Island area, dry for the Panhandle and western interior. And for tomorrow, that frontal system brings gale force winds and rain heavy at times into the Fox Islands. Lifting northward, north of the uh, central Aleutians, the winds will be diminishing in the afternoon behind the front. Scattered thunderstorms, Alaska Range and the Brooks Range Otherwise, mostly sunny over the interior, and for Thursday, not much change over the interior. A weakening front brings rain to the Pribilofs and Alaska Peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating. Thank you.